Wow, I was simply blown away by this version of We Are Not Ashamed. If you have not heard the song yet, check it out. I know Andre uh, Crouch did it. I know a choir, um, another choir did it. I put it on, an, on, on the screen for you there so you can see the original version of this song. Very nice song. And when I heard John Paul's um, version here, I was simply just um, blown away and inspired by it. And it was it was a fun transcription trying to figure these chords out. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what I found um, for this song, okay? Wow, just those first couple of chords. Let's go ahead and show you these. Um, the original song is just a... Right, that's how it goes. But listen to how he starts it. see that so basically he's starting off with a lot of he's starting off if you if you listen you hear a lot of those major second voicings so in the first one right and I'm not gonna go so much go by the quality of this chord but I want you to see this for this chord here and then this chord right so in this chord you have a major second here with a minor second minor second voicing sorry about that and then you have another minor second here right and so they're giving this this I call it a sus like quality which uh, my ear picks up which distinguishes it from a just a straight major triad quality which would be something like that right the reason I said major is because I'm, I'm thinking F is the root I know it says minor but with the F it's a um, this is a major voicing right but it distinguishes itself from a major sound by having a lot of those minor seconds in there and then we are not, there's another one there with the B and the C, another minor second. Okay, and so when you hear it, when you hear that, that's something that you can possibly do um, in your playing is to switch some of those major sounds, uh, give them some sus-like voicings, which means you put in a lot of the, a lot of the minor seconds um, for the, so the we are not, okay, I showed you that, and then ashamed, um, let's go with, um, I'm gonna go with this chord here, and then I'm gonna go with um, like that. Okay, so now let's look at that. See what that is. Okay, so so you can you definitely hear that F sharp in there. You definitely hear the F sharp in there, right? Um, and so okay, so let's have this as an A. We'll call this an A69 here, and then we'll call this on the chord that he used here. Wow, what's giving it that sound, you may say? What's, what the hell? I understand that it's a crazy chord, but why does it sound like that? Why does it sound so nice? Why does it sound so rich? Um, let me see if I can turn up my, um, yeah. Okay, so what, the reason why that chord sounds so rich, going from the, um, there is because he's going from now remember the original songs um, goes right it actually goes from like a from a or you could say can I mean you can take it from an an F major 7 to an E minor 7 but he's going a 6 9 to this and then what chord is that? Well, really, in all honesty, it's just a diminished chord. So, if I had an E diminished seventh, that would be the chord, right? But what note is being added to that chord? Now, look, let's look at the chord again. What note? Is, what note here is not in the diminished seventh chord? So, do you see it? I'm gonna put a vote up on the screen. Which note? that I'm playing here is not in diminished seventh voicing an E diminished seven. Okay, so hopefully, hopefully you guessed this note right here. This E flat in there changes the voicing. Now listen to it without the E flat. It sounds very dim like, right? But wow, that, that adds almost another dimension. And in fact, what it does is it changes this from a D7, a dim seven, which is it is a dim seven voicing, but it changes it to <clears throat> it changes it to a major seven because here, if I just have an E here, you see that it's a major seventh interval. 
So basically we have a, a dim chord with a major seventh interval in there making it sound really really nice going from the hear how that sounds so it sounds really nice really nice progression that you can add to your vocabulary there um, after he goes from the um, um, that chord there, very, very popular gospel um, gospel chord. What, what it is, is it's taking, what it actually is, it's a, a major third on the bottom, and it's an F on the top. Um, but really, it's better just to see this as an F chord, right? It's better to just see this as an F chord with an A on bottom, right? But what we're doing is, it, it's not really an A on bottom. What it is, it's, it's an A dominant chord. And that gives you, because you've heard those those kind of walk-ups. You know, you've heard those kind of walk-ups before. You know, those kind of walk-ups. Um, that's the principle involved. You really just have a major chord, but it's inverted. Okay. Spreading the spreading the the major third out and putting the A on the bottom it gives a lot of, a, a really solid sounding chord there. And he's coming from the right. Notice he already came from the A though. He already came from right. Remember because we said that he was doing this voicing. So he is already coming from an A, going to that E. And coming back to the A at the bottom, talking about in the root here, coming back to the A again. Oh, what is that? Oh, um, 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 I think that's what he's doing there. Yeah, okay, so. Now, let me hear that one more time. All right, so in this one, you have with the left hand, you're going to have... Um, so with the left hand, just go like that. With the right hand, let's take a, a minor chord. And then we're going to walk down to a G dim 7. So together, it'll be... Like that, okay. Okay. Okay, see that? All right, let's go on. Let's go on. Okay, so on that one. Okay, so I'm not completely exactly like him because I really want to focus on those last two chords there. So, um. Now, these chords that he uses, um, right, and actually this is not right because it should be, um, I want to voice it as an A, I want to voice it as an A69, which is, how do I get the A69? I just take the A major triad, add the 6, add the 9. So the chord before that would be, so let me let you hear that in context. Now notice that each time he does this E A, that he's not stuck with having only one way to do it. He's 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 voicing this differently every time. So here's the same same pattern we have again E A, but this time E. Remember that's on bottom, making this a rootless chord, making this a rootless voicing. He's got the E in the bottom, and with that E in the bottom, you've got this voicing. That's the chord, but remember. It's rootless. You gotta know what to what to do this with. You're doing it with that E on the bottom. See that? You know how that sounds? Very, very nice progression there. Um same that's that's that's, that's the same that's the same um same thing he did before. Yeah. Yeah, 
tri it's not really I want to voice it as a tritone because I feel like it's more of a passing note. Yeah. Okay, so that for that. Oh, that was nice. Did you hear did you hear those movements? And listen, without understanding the context of what he's doing, memorizing the movements without understanding you don't need it now now listen to what i'm saying it doesn't mean that you have to understand everything about theory it's understanding context and where to play and what things are coming from because listen if you listen to this that part there i can give you the chord which is that and then he goes and then he does that Right, but but that's the move. But it doesn't mean anything to me. I can teach you that move, right? But it still doesn't have a lot of meaning unless I know what what it's doing and what allows that. So check this out, right? So so now I want you to listen to what he's doing with his left hand. Ah, I heard that. So he's going. So, so but what's going on there? Well, and essentially, what's going on? See, on here. See, he's notice how notice how this ends on a B flat. So, in reality, what's happening is, and he's using a lot of ruler's voicings. And what's happening is, he's just playing. If if we say it's in the key of F, he's playing a five, one four progression, right? So on the on this part here, actually he may not even be hitting that E, but it, I think it's implied. But so uh, that that part here is with a C on the bottom that's implied that he doesn't play, and then that's an F at the bottom that he doesn't play. But then, right? So we've all heard that we've all heard the chords that go like this. Right? We've heard that before, but why play it like that when you can voice it differently? But what's neat about what I'm saying is that understanding, understanding where it came from and that it's simply a 514 means that you realize, right? If you only, if you only play the fancy stuff, you don't realize where it came from. How do you adapt? How do you change it? And that's where you guys, some of y'all get into sounding the same way every, every time you play. You know, you're just using the same chords because you, you memorize all the fancy chords, but you don't know, you don't understand where they came from. <laughs> so you're not able to deviate. You're not able to do that. Because if he... So um, why not... Right? Because if I know that progression, I can simply change it up. Right? Right? All, all different. I'm just, and that's just, those are just two easy, really simple ones that I can use right there to voice that differently. If I understand the context, that it's just a simply a two five one, right? And I use a C major nine there. I can use it as a with a, a D flat major with the F on bottom. I can use it with a, a G uh, major with an F on bottom. Same chord, right? I could use this as a um, with an A at the bottom at that F part and then at the nice little uh, B flat major 7 there so again understanding that allows me to make those choices okay I think that will conclude uh, the lesson for today go ahead and leave me a comment if you're able um, if you want to learn this song bomb through the MIDI file it will be in the description area or you can just kind of click on the top with the little circle in the top of this video with the, with the little eye there and you can get it that way as well also, um, I have a bundle of all of my free MIDI files, plus I threw in some extras, so go ahead and check that out on my homepage that's on the screen there. So check that out if you would like to get that bundle, simply just um, enter your email address and we'll send that to you. Also, finally, if you like this video, um, be sure to hit that like button for me. Don't forget to subscribe, and until then, we will see everybody later. See you guys next week. Thanks again for watching.